Hi, I'm Claire Tompkins, The Clutter Coach, and this is the Organize Your Life podcast. I am passionate about organizing because it makes my clients' lives so much easier, more relaxed, and with more time to spend the way they want to. That's what organizing is all about, not about being neat or having the right containers. It's about getting more time for what matters to you. My specialty is chunking down this big topic so it's not overwhelming. That's the concept behind my book, Five Minutes to a Relaxing Bedroom. And that's the concept for this podcast, too, which is based on my first book, 52 Simple Ways to Get Organized. Both books are available on my website and on Amazon. I work with clients in person in the Berkeley, California area and via email and Skype, so you don't have to be local to work with me. With my help, your home will become a place you love and welcome guests into. Your office will be a place for being energized and productive. Visit the Hire tab on my website or email me at claire at clettercoach.net. In every podcast, I'll lay out a simple organizing concept and tell you why it's important. And I'll include an action step at the end so you can start practicing right away. Okay, here we go. Today, I'll talk about simple way number 30 from my book. It's called Time is Short. You will never have enough time to get it all done. That is the truth, I'm sorry to say. No matter how productive you are, you just won't because it's not possible. I listened to a webinar today about getting control over email. The speaker, the creator of a program called SaneBox, said that Inbox Zero, which means dealing with all your mail every day so that zero is left unacted upon, is a fine strategy. But every morning there are a hundred new emails you need to handle. Meaning, the problem continues to occur because email continues to occur. Life occurs every day. If you're engaged with life, you'll have new things coming at you all the time. But that's a good thing. Save yourself some grief by accepting this and using it to help you prioritize. As Robert Louis Stevenson wrote, The world is so full of a number of things, I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. We don't want fewer wonderful things, fewer cool, new, interesting things, right? We don't want to be in the dark, out of the loop, uninformed. What we want is ways not to be overwhelmed by all that. The book, The Paradox of Choice, is about how overwhelming and stressful it is to have too much choice. I highly recommend it. We are so lucky to have this banquet to select from, but it does have its downside. Buying even a jar of jam is daunting when there are 24 flavors to choose from instead of just six. The book recounts an experiment where shoppers who had more choice actually bought less. Sometimes they bought nothing. It was too stressful to choose. Since we live in a world of nearly limitless choice, it's up to us as individuals to develop strategies to avoid that overwhelm. First, recognize that you can't get everything done and that that's okay. Be happy that all these opportunities are available, but don't feel compelled to snap up each one. When you oppose limits on yourself, you avoid spreading yourself too thin and not being able to fully enjoy the opportunities you do take advantage of. I'm not saying this is easy, Living in a large, sophisticated urban area, I often feel like I'm missing out on so much. I keep reminding myself that trying to experience more usually results in being too busy and overcommitted. And then I stop having fun, and I'm cranky. So then I go back to doing less. Also, it's important to savor the opportunities that you choose. When you're constantly scanning the horizon for something new, you aren't fully engaged in the present that you've chosen for yourself. If you aren't paying attention enough while you're experiencing something, it ends up being unsatisfying and then causing a craving for the next thing. Then you're back to scanning the horizon. Mostly I've been talking today about experiences you want in your life, but we can apply this strategy to the stuff you need to get done too. Do you have items on your to-do list that never seem to get crossed off? A few weeks ago I talked about having a master list to stash all the to-dos that haven't made it to the daily to-do list. Make sure you look at that list from time to time to see if any of those items are ready to be promoted to the daily list. This involves balancing the things you must get done with what you want to do. Time is short, my friends. Don't let your list only be must-dos. However, there may be items that stay on the master list indefinitely. They may be perfectly good ideas, but not as good as the ones that you choose to get done. This is the thing to accept. It doesn't mean that you aren't being productive enough that you don't get to everything. It's still worthwhile to capture all those ideas just in case and to let your conscious mind let them go. Your task this week 
See if you have any to-dos on your list that aren't getting done. Then, either prioritize them higher or park them back on the master list. Move them forward or move them backward instead of just letting them gather dust. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Claire Tompkins, the Clutter Coach. If you like the show, I'd love it if you'd leave a rating and review in iTunes. You can subscribe, too, so the podcast will be ready and waiting for you to listen to. The show is available on SoundCloud and Stitcher as well. You'll find the show notes on my blog at www.cluttercoach.net. And you can check out my store to find books I've written and books and products I recommend, and some freebies, too. I work with folks in their homes and offices to bust clutter and get them organized so they can stay that way easily. Get in touch and find out how I can help you. I'm in Berkeley, California, and you can reach me at claire at cluttercoach.net. Come back for more next week. Thank you.